I think we're all connected in some soul level. A lot of days where I wonder. The question why, it was bugging me. I think um, as the world becomes smaller, the tolerance of different religions and faiths becomes greater. I was thinking about this a lot yesterday, about what we might talk about. And I think where I ended up was this reaffirmation that um, we are predominantly receivers, receptors of information, not transmitters. That, And I think most people think they're transmitters, their role is to take information, process it, and pass it on, right? That we all have this legacy. And that's the balance for me is like between complete nihilism that we have no meaning and then the opposite of that which is we live based on our faith that everything we do is to make the future better right um, and i don't know where i am on that spectrum but definitely more towards the nihilistic bit which is we're probably only as important as receptors as we are as receptors so um, I was trying to think of some examples of this, but uh, the obvious one was, you know, we talk about the, uh, the tree that falls in the forest. Can anyone hear it? When a tree falls, it makes a noise, right? And something receives it. So I was thinking through that. And so our job is to receive this information. But at the same time, I'm thinking that's great, but who gives a fuck if you're the tree, right? Once the tree falls and there's a noise, so what? So when I die, does the universe lack meaning anymore, right? So all the good I do doesn't matter if I'm not there to process that information, to receive that information, right? And again, I haven't thought this through. It's been out there for 10, 15 years. It's in my spectrum of what I think about. But part of me is once I'm gone, nothing else matters because I'm not there to receive the information, right? So yeah, I have to live with the belief that what I'm doing is going to help people, that I have some impact, that I'm going to make the world better in some way, right? Whether that's on a large scale like Einstein or on a small scale like I help the homeless guy across the street. That's a sort of motivational force. I'm, I'm here to make things better, but at the same time, once I die, it doesn't really matter because I'm no longer there to be part of the universe. So it doesn't matter. So do I believe in a bigger thing? I don't know, once I die, it's not there anymore. It literally isn't there anymore. So the sum of my universe will be the 100, 120 years that I plan on being around, and then it's over. Not to be trite that the living is in the doing, um, but if I had to break it down to basic principles, I think empathy is probably the foremost principle. Followed closely by perspective. I try to get involved and, and be as contrary as I can, but I'll always take the position of the underdog and not because I'm a good guy, um, but because it's so easy to be the dominant force in an argument and take the side, right? The easy side. So perspective um, is critical to me and empathy, as I said, is foremost. And I think you, you have to have that um, to be valuable. The only way you can measure your relationship with other people is through understanding them, again, through receiving that information through your eyes. You are the ultimate filter of everything. Again, if you believe in what I said, or at least heard what I said about being receptors, nothing happens in the universe and nothing is important except as you understand it, as, a, as, as you, not even as a human, as you. Unless you empathize, uh, which gives you perspective, um, 
what value is anything? You're literally just a, a data recorder. So er, yeah, everything has to be empathic to me, right? And my job, I'm, you know, I'm a, um, my, my job is to do strategy, right? Mm -hmm. My job is to listen and interpret things uh, that are happening and try to feed them back in ways that mean something to someone, all right? And, and what's the point of being a human if you don't have a meaningful existence? Well, you can't have meaning if you can't relate to other people. Uh, to me, empathy is fundamental to that. Um, and, and this is, is trite, but sympathy is fairly useless. I, I don't, sympathy to me has no value, right? It's sort of a, a saccharine version of compassion. It doesn't mean anything, it's sort of a tactical reaction. But if you can truly empathize, and I don't mean that in a deep spiritual way, I don't want to be a kid in Gaza, I don't want to be a homeless girl on a bench, I don't want to really experience what's that like, but in order for me to have a meaningful existence around other people. I have to be able to imagine how much it must suck not to have food or have people trying to kill my parents um, for me to grow. And if you don't empathize, you, you don't learn. Um, so yeah, em empathy is, is the core of everything. Knowing that I am not the most important thing or the least important thing in the universe, that I'm only um, relevant in the sense that I have meaning to other people um, you know all the usual stuff I want to do good um, I want to affect things I want to have meaning I don't want to do things that aren't creative and productive I don't want to just um, you know I don't want to be Mr. Pickwood I don't, I don't just want to get by um, I want to change and affect I want to be remembered um, I want to do things that make other people's lives better. The feeling of powerlessness, right? That must be the pure definition of fear. Absolutely no control over your environment, that you are completely powerless. I'm certainly not in control of a lot of stuff. I don't, I don't fool myself that I am, right? But in as much as I can control things, I try to control them. And anything that falls outside of that remit, I don't worry about because I have no control of it. And therefore, a big word, therefore, I'm not afraid of it because I can't control it. I, and I just look at stuff like that, which feels a bit black and white, but it's the way it seems to me. You are not dealing in facts when people are losing their shit, you're dealing in emotion. And you can try to use facts, I find that when you do use facts, it's much better to use them anecdotally to say, look, I've been in that position. I know someone who did exactly that and try to create as much empathy as possible to get through the emotion, use emotion to get through the emotion. That's what I generally try to do um, is just sort of be stable, right? Because I, uh, not to stretch a metaphor too far, but that's when you're drowning, you're looking for something to cling on to. You're not looking for someone to explain to you that the best thing to find is something to cling on to. You just want something to grab hold of you, hold you and tell you it's gonna be okay. So I guess that's what I do. I know that when I tell people things are gonna be okay, I'm, that's as much a leap of faith for me as it probably is for them. I, I might even make stories up to tell them I know this has happened to someone because I know the hard part is getting through the moment, right? And you just have to get through the moment and however you do that, you get them through because the only, again, based on my perspective, the only way it's going to get better is when you take control of it or let someone take care of it for you, but it's to change the environment. Um, so yeah, I think uh, be, be the rock, um, try to speak with some credibility and authority, but build a, some sort of bond between them and you. Um, I would have laws that I thought were equal. Um, I would do everything I could to abolish poverty. Weapons, defense systems, borders, anything that creates barriers between human beings, I would do that. Um, and yeah, it's a utopian society and it's ridiculous to state any of those things. The only value is in that they give me a goal by which to they are my compass by which to guide my life. So I would do anything I can to reduce the importance of borders to people. You know, I'm not gonna burn a flag, but I will certainly advocate burning flags. Um, I will certainly advocate doing away with passports. I would certainly advocate 
um, giving people autonomy over their states and allowing free transfer of commerce. I'm all for offshoring. I'm all for immigration. All those things are influenced by that, that one principle, which is that we're all part of one planet and everybody's equal. Again, I have no influence on that. Um, all I can do is my little bit to try to make that happen. Analytically, a nice easy one to answer, but I have so little belief that I have a, a role in affecting the change that it's hard for me to answer with much authenticity. <laughs> by definition, by extension, anything I've said means the present is perfect, right? It, it's that single point in time, point in the river, where you can't change anything. It is by definition perfect. Right now, that's a very abstract, airy fairy answer, but it does guide me. Right now, I definitely have my utopian vision of what will be better. Whether it happens or not, I don't know. I know we're moving in that direction. Is that perfection? Yeah, but at the same time, we are right now with the tree, right? Right now, it is perfect because it can't get any better or worse. It is what it is. So other than giving sort of flip answers like Audrey Hepburn or a 3-2 away win at Watford, uh, perfection is what it is, right? It just is now. But that's the best answer I can give. My name is Pip and I'm just me.